Home Assistant. Home Assistant has become an integral part of my life over the last couple of years. Well, last three or four years. And Home Assistant is finally to a point that it is actually a mature product. They've got like 50 people working on the project. And they have stuff you can subscribe to online. And there's a lot of fun stuff. And this is the Home Assistant Voice Project, which is incredibly impressive. And I'm working to integrate in my own Home Assistant setup. At this video started out as a home assistant voice video but i have some things to say some things to share and if you are into home automation or you're thinking about doing home automation or you have home automation that is not based on home assistant you definitely want to watch this video because it's a little bit my experiences as a gearhead and a little bit it's time it's ready things are happening let's uh take a closer look Okay, so Home Assistant Voice. I'm a little late to the party. This is a kind of a beta product. This is for uh, developers and gearheads and people that want to mess around with it. Not that all of Home Assistant is like that. I actually think all of Home Assistant is basically ready. They're, they're reaching critical mass. If they're not quite there, they will be there very, very quickly. This is a smart microphone that you can talk to and it stays local. You can have a large language model that is entirely local. You can have an entirely cloudless experience, 100% privacy respecting, guaranteed not to be listening to you surreptitiously. That is very, very attractive in a product because in this world, the time between you buy a product and the time that it becomes completely useless is shorter and shorter and shorter timescales. Thermostats, thermostats go offline and stop working, thanks Google because, oh, it's not cost effective for us to support that anymore. See also what Sonos did, see also, listen, the future is bleak, you can't trust any of these companies, you have to take control of it, and the sooner you do that, the sooner there's a critical mass of developers developing things that normal people can enjoy, and the developers are also normal people. There's not some sort of, you know, uh, sociopathic crazy person running things at the helm to make your experience as terrible as possible or to just treat you as a walking wallet to pry it open and take money out. I'm looking at you, Amazon. Amazon smart speaker products. This, this is an actual real product that is toward that. It uses Whisper and it's open source and a whole bunch of stuff that the Home Assistant team developed to really glue it all together to make it a better user experience. Yes, we are still talking about things in the open source world not quite having the tens of millions of dollars of polish in it but we're getting there i'd say we're probably at least halfway there because when i started with home assistant it was just shell scripts and node red automation so now it actually has an attractive gui you can do fun things with it remember the re-terminal video i did that has progressed fantastically you can just hang an lcd screen on your wall do power over ethernet and see the status of, as, of home assistant running great there's ESP32 e-ink displays that will show you the status for things going on in your house. And these are things that will work until time immemorial because they're essentially a wireless display. This is essentially a wireless microphone. It's the same philosophy. So let's open it up and take a look. <laughs> Preview edition. They want, they want to be very clear. Don't get your hopes up. But I've seen the future in this product. Okay, Naboo. Oh, I shouldn't say that because it's going to trigger your stuff. I'm so sorry. Cancel. Never mind. Warranty and safety information. What can I say? It really is inspiring. You can say, turn on the living room light, turn on the TV, set the bedroom light to blue. So you have RGB in there. Add bread to my shopping list. What is the temperature in the living room? Where's Anne? Create a timer for five minutes. But also, any request that it doesn't understand, your intent can be forwarded to a large language model. So you might have remembered the video that I did a few months ago where it was a, an ADA SFF 4000 series GPU. This is also kind of a key component of my local LLM because I want to feed the audio from this to that SFF 4000, which is probably overkill, but it has an absurdly fast, well, relatively speaking for the power and everything else, number of tokens per second. Because when you talk to this and it doesn't understand your intent, it forwards it to an LLM of your choice. You, you can sort of program it and set it and do fun things with that. And so if I can forward it to my LLM, the faster the LLM responds and gets through the prompt, the faster that this will take the text and convert it back to speech. So this seems more responsive. And I want to build a very responsive system to be sure. And that, that build is going to be in a different video. So 
this is it. And on the bottom, there's the breakaway for Grove port, in case you wanna use the Grove expansion stuff. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. USB type C, and we've got a three and a half millimeter audio port here, and then the button. Now the easiest way to set this up is to use your cell phone and Bluetooth because it can get all of your Wi-Fi network stuff for that. My setup is a little more complicated, so I can't show it in this video because I have a separate IoT network, which of course, and so don't worry about it. That, that part, it works. If you, for normal, ordinary setups, it's, it, it totally works fine. I might have liked to have seen a PoE port or like the USB-C port, like you could run USB-C to one of those power adapters that has a built-in Ethernet port, a la like what Google does, which would be amazing because then I could do PoE and USB-C and everything else on just one connection. But hey, uh, we'll get there, we'll get there. Well, it's gonna be popular enough that that is gonna be a thing. If Home Assistant has been off your radar, you really should check out Home Assistant. It can do a lot. I can do things now like, uh, hey Jarvis, sorry, sorry, that's somebody else's, that's, a, that's another wake word. The, the wake word, like the these have hardware wake words, so this is not streaming audio somewhere now, but the, three built in like for a while you'll see some things that's like oh use one of these wake words it's not actually the case anymore just you can set whatever you want and it's more open source like the home assistant team has done incredible things that are very privacy respecting and they don't have corporate overlords as far as i can tell and so i subscribe to the home like there's a cloud thing you can get from home assistant and you know put your backups there and you can stream some stuff there i have that but i don't actually use it just to give them money because I, it's wow, Home Assistant. Anyway, if you're not familiar with Home Assistant, you should be because there are bridges for HomeKit and bridges for Z-Wave. I myself use Lutron stuff and I have a Lutron Ethernet bridge for my switches and everything else. Uh, Saving up to get the Lutron Smart Shades because whew, those are expensive. But the Lutron Smart Shades will also work with this on a, on a couple of things. And you just talk to it, it's like, hey, open the shades in here. Okay, there you go. And in here it knows because of, of where this is. You can also do it with your phone. And I found this a little bit more convenient. You can put the web app on your phone and then just touch, you know, you go to a web app basically and then do the microphone thing and talk to your, your uh, home assistant through your phone. So you use your phone like a communicator, like, hey, what's the status of whatever? And it'll, it'll tell you. You can also, with the large language model, if it has the ability to run tools, you can start to really build complicated things, again, if you're a developer. Or if you're, you know, fun employed, uh, there's some open source stuff, you can build the old resume and start doing some crazy stuff. You can tell the large language model something like, if you see anybody out front other than the mailman, let me know. Whereas most days you might not care. So anyway, this is exciting and you can buy one of these, but also Home Assistant has come a long way and there's a thread on the forum. If you are a Home Assistant user, I want you to go post your setup, like just pictures of your dashboard, what you've got going to help people understand the kinds of things that they can build with Home Assistant. Uh, I fully expect that in the not too distant future, there will be more setup wizards and more integrations for Home Assistant to make it as easy as possible. The Home Assistant team experimented with some of that in the setup for this device. I really, my bar was not really super high. I expected this to be a device for nerds, but the Home Assistant team apparently has um, people that sort of understand what ordinary people need. Like, a, <laughs> as, as is the case with technical things, you know, a lot of technical people, it's like, I only have a printer at home and I keep a gun next to the printer in case the printer makes a noise I don't recognize. This is basically how most technical people are at home if you're not the over the top gadget person. And Home Assistant lets you be the, uh, the printer gun person while still also having, you know, some really cool whiz bang stuff in your house because you can be assured that nothing untoward is happening because you control literally everything. And the setup for this is also not a pain. So sometimes when I set up something, I want it to be zero maintenance to the point that I will not update software or I will not deal with it for three or four years and then there's not a direct path to upgrade. But the setup wizard for the smart speaker, they've put a lot of work into experimenting with what is the easiest way possible. And that's why the phone setup thing exists with that because there's a thing in your phone where you can say, is it okay if I share the Wi-Fi credentials with this? And then yes, and then you hit the button on it to confirm, which is a really cool, clever security thing um, that they've done with that, which is which is fun. But it's also fairly noob friendly. And so as time, if Home Assistant moves as far in the next five years as they did in the last five years, 
they are going to completely take over home automation stuff in the most fair and reasonable and uh, consumer oriented, consumer friendly, not user hostile, I should say, not user hostile way. And that is something we desperately sorely need in, in 2025 because companies, I mean, even if a company has a good product, they'll come out with terrible software. And if some clever person figures out a way to do away with their terrible software and put open source software on it or figure out some way to work around the awfulness, the company will go out of its mind to shut things down. See also what Sony did with the mods, you know, there was the game, it's like, oh, let's run this game at 60 FPS, it's a mod, you have to have the game, you have to have bought the game. Sony's like, no, we don't, we don't want people to experience that at 60 FPS. That's the level of corporate uh, sociopathic leadership that we're dealing with at every level. Cereal, I'll give you an example like cereal. I've got my, my, my crispy honey oats here. The ingredients are whole grain, oat flour, sugar, wheat starch, honey, and salt. There is a future where I talk to the large language model at my house and it's got my grocery list and it knows where I'm buying stuff. And it knows that I will not stand for that kind of shenanigans. What kind of shenanigans am I talking about? Ingredients, whole grain oats, cane sugar, cornstarch, honey, salt, tripotassium phosphate, molasses, natural almond flavor, etc., etc. There's no wheat, or at least if there was wheat, it was much farther down the ingredient list. It tastes different. And this is happening to a lot of things because of economic and other conditions. But the goal, and the home assistant is only tangential to this goal, is to build a system that turns in the average consumer with everything in your life into the super consumer. The most sophisticated, nightmarish super consumer that, that uh, General Mills and Millville and uh, whatever other companies are responsible for this. Uh, this, is, this one is distributed by Aldi Inc. And, uh, bought via Illinois uh, to just become the most nightmarish consumer ever in terms of paying attention to the labels and understanding things. You see, companies understand that people don't want to do that. It's exhausting. People work too many hours for not enough pay and keeping up with this kind of thing is too much of a headache. You know what's really good at dealing with that? These kinds of AI tools and everything else. And so as I put my grocery list together, uh, just one of the things that can be in the list is run through all the ingredients, see if any of the ingredients have changed, and if so, flag them. Also, Jarvis, can you tell me which toasted oat cereal contains the most actual toasted oats? Because, God forbid, I expect the toasted oat cereal to contain mostly toasted oats and not wheat. Like, how insane is that? I don't know. Apparently in 2025, that's completely insane. But what we do, especially those of you that are fun employed, is we build the monster tool. We build the thing for consumers to go super consumer. And then we know, hey, uh, United Fruit Company is gonna topple some uh, you know, third world government so we have cheaper bananas. Uh, the AI is gonna flag that and say, well, I don't know if you wanna buy that brand of banana. There's some, there's some bad things going on. This brand of banana has unionized labor and yeah, it costs 15 cents more per banana, but no one died in, in the, the government change in whatever country they came from. That's probably impossible these days. Like there's probably, you know, <laughs> there's probably some spilled blood for basically every banana that you buy, which is again, the dark future that we live in. But if there's an AI tool to sift through all of that data and keep an eye on things, how awesome would that be? And you just talk to it and tell it things like that. And that's, uh, that's maybe a video for the far future. In the meantime, right now, what I want you to do, you got a home assistant set up that is amazing, show us. You got some really cool ideas for stuff like that that you do with your grocery list. Show us, you can use the API, use the Food and Drug Administration API. It's like, oh, I've noticed these 37 things on your grocery list are actually cheaper at this other grocery store. You wanna make two stops? Yes, I would. If you think that Amazon would build a tool like that for you, you are sadly mistaken because the companies that Amazon sells on would literally pay them not to do that. And if anybody is going to build tools like that, it's gonna be you and me. The open source componentry here at least helps keep the home assistant people honest, I think. And that's enough preaching for one day. This is actually a really nice home speaker. You should take a look at it. I'm gonna show off some stuff with my home setup in the not too distant future. If you wanna check out a really old video, the Iron Fireman video, you can sort of know where I was on this trajectory. I also did a video on uh, augmenting, but plugging in the DSC uh, alarm system and alarm sensors into Home Assistant a while ago. That has worked out fantastically well on this very long time scale. Very happy with that. That plus the Lutron sensors and everything else and switches and stuff that I've got going. Very, very nice. But that'll have to be a video for another day. I want to see your Home Assistant setups and show off the clever stuff that you've done with Home Assistant in a thread at the forum at level one. And then we'll take a look at all that stuff in a future video. I'm signing out and I'll see you there.